Now, this is a big one here. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 in the NLT. Colossians chapter 2. In fact, let's, let's start at verse 6. Let's read verse 6, 7, 8, and 9 in the NLT. Number three, here's a landmine. Beware of the philosophy of men. Let's define philosophy. This is where we left off last week. Philosophy is a theory or attitude held by a person or organization that acts as a guiding principle for behavior. A theory or an attitude held by a person or an organization that acts as a guiding principle for behavior. So it's a theory. It's an attitude that a person or an organization came up with. Doesn't have to be truth, but this is what they decided to use as a guiding principle for how they behave. Now, listen to what the Bible says about this. You, you just don't want to adopt somebody's principle. It's like the norms and values of the world. The norms and values of society says, if a whole bunch of people of society think this is right, then it's right because all these people think it's right. Those are the norms and values of society. Society gets together, and they take a survey, and they say, I don't think nothing wrong with this. I think that's fine. And then now it's right, not because it's really right. It's right because the norms and values of society has set this as being something that's right. And then you adapt it. And then when, if you're not here when they did that, then generations down the line, it, it becomes like a norm. Of course this is wrong with that. Of course that's right. And that's why the Bible says there's coming a time where people will call the things that are wrong right, and then they'll call the things right wrong. I think we're already there on that one, aren't we? <laughs> Verse 6 says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him. Mm. Not, not into the philosophies of men, not into the norms and values. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world. Did you hear what he just said? No, here's the part. I'm looking. He says, don't be arrested or captured by human philosophy. By, first of all, he says he calls it empty philosophy. He, and then he calls it high-sounding nonsense. <laughs> Do you know the norms and values of the world, has, they have taken on, believed, and, and fought for high-sounding nonsense that comes from, watch this, comes from human thinking. And watch this, and it comes from spiritual powers of this world. That's demon powers. That's demonic influence that norms and values have set as being, this is fine. Rather than from Christ. We got a decision to make. Either you're going to allow the world through the norms and values of the world to set your thinking, Either you will allow the philosophy, empty philosophies, to set your thinking, and the devil bets on that. The devil says, if I can give you my philosophy, and if I can get you to believe my philosophy, and hey, while I'm at it, let me set this philosophy towards norms and values of the world, and then you might tend to believe it more. How many of us have been seduced walking around with a philosophy that came from human thinking and demonic influence. And you will put your whole life on the line for something that was demonically induced to a human mind and produced an empty philosophy. That's what we are. Because we ignore Christ. We don't pay attention to him. We don't keep our focus on him. 
We're seeing what the great poet says, and we're seeing what the great philosopher says, and all oh, my hero politicians said this, and all, oh, you know, the, the, the preacher who don't preach out the Bible said that, and all oh, that, oh, that, that that's, that's deep right there. That's what, you know, we say stuff, and it, and it come out with a rhyme and a shine, and ooh, 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 that was deep, that was deep. But did it come from Jesus? Or is it really empty philosophy? <sighs> Don't be tricked or seduced by empty philosophies. That's how the enemy gets into people's head and into people's lives. You start listening to philosophy. And listen, I'm a former therapist. <laughs> I found that the scriptures were more effective than the philosophy that was supposed to be used to help people. I look at some of the people came in, I'm like, this ain't going to work on you. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> Let me go get something Jesus said and make it sound like it came out of one of these books. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. He says, pay attention to that. I wonder how many people will walk out of here today and set themselves up to be duped. Wonder what commercial will get you? What speech will get you? Wonder what, I wonder what hero will get you? I wonder what famous actor will stand up and say something and you think, oh, that's great. Wonder what poet will get you. What empty philosophy is going to invade your thinking today, opening the door for demonic influence based on that way of thinking instead of Jesus' way of thinking. Uh-huh, ain't nobody shouting here today. I love it. <laughs> I love it, boy. Let's look at this next land, landmine. Life comes through the Word. Let's go to Psalms 119, verse 36 and 37 in, in, in the NLT. Psalms 119, 36 and 37 in the NLT. I want to move quick because I want to show you how to win this battle. All right, now watch this. Now, we, you know we live in a world where people believe that money equals success. <laughs> That's an empty philosophy. I, 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 my heart go out to you because when you get it, you're going to realize why, how come I don't feel successful. You can afford a $5,000 suit, but ain't nobody there to tell you you shop. <laughs> you can buy a $300,000 car and don't nobody want to ride with you. And you can buy the biggest house in Atlanta, Georgia, and ain't nobody in there but you haunting the house alive. <laughs> Man can give you medicine, but only God can give you healing. You can go out and buy a home, a house, but only God can turn it into a home. You can go buy your friend for the night, but it ain't going to be genuine love and relationship. It's all about your bag. So that ain't it. And neither do we go to the extreme either and say, well, I'm, I'm just going to be poor because that's what Jesus wants. Jesus wasn't poor. <laughs> you should see some people looking at me like, he what? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Uh, you remember Judas? You, you remember a guy named Judas used to travel with Jesus? What position did he hold? What does a poor man need with a treasurer? <laughs> yeah, but brother, all the Bible says foxes have holes, birds of the air have a nest, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. All right, you've been conned. Now put the text back in there. The context was they were traveling, and they were going through a village where there was a lot of racism against them. And they heard about Jesus was coming here. They said, no, you can't stay here. 
Not today. You can't stay here. And he tried to tell his disciples, because one of them wanted to call fire down from heaven, from heaven again. Do we do like Elijah and call fire down? He said, you don't know what man of spirit you are of. He said, foxes have holes in this village. Birds of the air have a nest in this village. But the Son of Man don't even have nowhere to lay his head in this village. That's why we're going to the next village. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? And for years, we bought the idea that Jesus was the lowly, broke, pole Jesus. Peter wouldn't believe that because Peter needed to pay his taxes. And Jesus said, I got you. And said, fish. He said, look in the mouth. You'll see money for his taxes and go and pay mine while you're at it. <laughs> we bought it. And then many taught it. But he says in verse 36, give me an eagerness for your laws at that time rather than a love for money. Turn my eyes from worthless things and give me life through your word. Are your eyes focused on worthless things when life can only come through his word? Where's your focus? Where's your focus? Taffy said this morning, everything about right now is about focus. God wants you to focus on Jesus, and Satan wants you to focus on everything else. But what happens when you focus on Jesus? You remember, I think it was Peter again. Uh, Jesus told them to go ahead, and there was a storm, and they went ahead, and Jesus went to pray, and then he caught up with them. But they saw, they saw at the time they thought it was something. The Bible says they thought it was a phantom or a ghost walking on the water. And, and the, the, the disciples, they weren't trying to hang around. You know, how, you know how we do. We ain't even got to know what's going on. We can be walking and somebody run. We run with it. What are we running for? <laughs> so Peter said, if it be thou, bid me to come. So he put Jesus' back against the wall. There was nothing else but one thing that Jesus could do. Because if, what was Jesus supposed to say? It be, not, it be thou not me? <laughs> if it be thou, bid me to come to you on the water. So Peter, Jesus said, come. So Peter, we, we, put, we try to put the, 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 the solution on the word come. mm, -mm. Peter got out the boat, focused on Jesus. Look at the focus now. All right, now pay attention to what happened. He got out the boat, focused on Jesus. And watch this. He kept looking at Jesus. And while he was looking at Jesus, he was doing something a man is not supposed to be able to do. A human being can't walk on water. A human being can't defy gravity. What happened? He was focused on Jesus long enough, and as long as he was focused on Jesus, he entered into the dimension of the supernatural. Y'all get that? He's here. Y'all don't hear me. He can't see nothing else but Jesus, and now he has tapped into the dimension of the supernatural where the super is raised him above the natural and he's doing something you're not supposed to be able to do in the natural, but when you focus in on Jesus, you focus in on God in Jesus, you're looking at the supernatural and you're invited into that dimension. So he steps out of one dimension of the natural, steps up into the dimension of the supernatural and defies natural law. Watch this, watch, watch this. And Satan said, well, I got to stop this. 
because man is about to find out how powerful he is. Oh, my God, do you want me to go there? I had a conversation with God about this the other day, and, and I'm thinking, like, don't, you're not going to have me teach that right now because I don't know enough. And he just said, I want you to share some of that right now. Now watch this. Listen to this. When Adam and Eve were created, oh, we're not going to finish this today. Is it? When Adam and Eve were created, they were not created mortal beings. Mortal meaning, uh, excuse me, they were, they, yeah, they were not created mortal meaning to die or an end. You're mortal. We're mortal because we die. We don't live forever. Man was created immortal. Man was created never to die. Guide me, Lord. Adam and Eve were never supposed to die. They were ir immortal beings. Mm. Satan comes in. Listen to this. And distracts them in their thinking. You want to know how you can be snatched back from the dimension of the supernatural? Let him start talking to you about your thinking. When he looked at Peter walking on the water, he said, notice what's around you. Look at them waves, boy. Feel that wind. He said, huh? Oh, oh. All right, watch this. And he began to sing. Because Satan could disrupt the thinking or the focus that can lead a man into the supernatural dimension. Follow me. So in the garden, Adam and he, now Eve was talking to him and said, uh, we're not supposed to eat this. The day we eat it, we're going to die. Watch the devil. Watch his desperation. Just outright lie. You will not die. God said, you will die. He said, you will not die. How much has God said to you that the devil turned around and said, that ain't going to happen? What is he trying to do? I can't afford to lose you to that supernatural dimension because if I lose you to that supernatural dimension, I won't be able to do this to you no more. Follow me. And then he turns around and says, you don't need God in the garden. You eat this fruit, you can be just like him. You don't need him. Why would you need God? Do y'all hear what he's saying? This is, I know I'm, I'm, I'm teetering on this real thin line. Why you need God? Let me, let me, let me can I read it between now just a little bit? I'm finna go there, I'm finna say it. Why you need God when you were made like him? He knew that, stole that from us, and we can't possibly even fathom. And he told you in the Bible, what is man? He answers the question. What is man that you are mindful of him, that you visit him, that you made him a little lower than yourself, Elohim? Now, I know I ain't God, you ain't God, nothing like that, but we have access to the same dimension, and we've shown up got access now that we're in Christ, but even in Christ, we, we still limit what God's trying to bring. There's got to be a reason why we're going through all this. There's got, why, what was God up to before Satan came into the garden? Man was supposed to be immortal. What was, what was God getting ready to do with a man that was supposed to live forever and ever and never die? What was his plan? And of course, he had to grow. He had to mature. And Satan showed up to humiliate God's plan and tried to turn 
his, one of his greatest creations, just like he turned the angelic creation. You know how he turned them? Don't depend on God. Depend on yourself. Declare your declaration. Make a declaration of independence from God. Declare that you don't need God. That's how he turned a third of the angels, and that's how he turned the entire human race. And so he says, I got to go and fix this. I'm going to lay the plan out a little bit at a time. And he who tried to humiliate me, I'm going to humiliate him. He said, God, look at your prize. They sinned against you. Oh, Lord, this is so good. Watch this. Ha! Your angels, a third of them turned against you. That, 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 a third was like millions. He said, okay. <laughs> you think you know what you're doing, don't you, boy? You forgot who made you. <laughs> Little boy, you don't, you don't understand. You don't understand. I know you, boy. So, all right, here's what we're going to do. Oh, here's what we're going to do. You think you humiliated me because you got man to sin? Against me? Okay, so I'm going to come down in, hold on, hold on. I'm going to come down in a flesh body. And I am going to live a perfect life in a flesh body. I'm going to keep all 600 and something laws I'm going to keep everything. I won't fail, not one bit. I will be perfect. And the Word became flesh and started dwelling amongst men. Jesus died to save the entire world. Today, He's training us in grace so that we can go out and influence someone else's life. That's why I'm so grateful for the friends and partners of this ministry who freely and cheerfully give financial offerings to support us. You understand our vision and you help us in so many ways to reach those who are searching for hope in the midst of darkness. Thank you for empowering us to expand God's kingdom worldwide. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit creflodollarministries.org today. God bless you.